right, welcome to day six of 10 times your happiness. Today we're talking 10 times your intuition. I love intuition. I think um, I have this tendency to, to like, it's like my best friend. I like just to stay in my brain all the time thinking intuitively, well, what does this mean? What? It's almost like this is this long, dark hallway with hundreds of doors. It's almost maybe like the matrix. And I just like to go through each door. I'm like, ooh, I wonder where this door goes. I wonder where this door goes. Well, most people aren't wired that way. In fact, intuition, it seems uh, kind of overwhelming or, um, it's like uh, Sasquatch. It's like, I don't, I've never seen it. So how can I believe that it exists? Intuition does not come naturally to me. So hopefully today we're going to help you with balancing that intuition if you're highly intuitive. And if you do not have any sense of like what intuition looks like, maybe we'll give you some inspiration on how to find that. So if this is your first time to make mindfulness fun, be sure to subscribe to join us on all of our um, amazing mindfulness practices that we share with you every day. Um, mm -hmm. um, and here we help you on your journey to higher consciousness so you can experience more joy, love, and emotional liberation. And as much as we try, we try to keep these tips really simple and fun. I know sometimes I ramble and they seem like they're they're complex, but we're trying really hard. So make sure, you know, leave comp comments if if uh, they're not simple enough. If you need it in like broken down, even smaller steps, please let us know because our goal is to provide you small tips, easy tips, fun tips to make mindfulness a part of everyday life. And last thing, make sure you turn on your post notifications for us because we don't want you to miss a single one of our chakra series and our more series to come. So the third eye, the third eye is my favorite chakra. It's, it's the their coolest favorite. chakra in my opinion. <laughs> okay, the third eye is home to intuition, but it's also our wisdom and open-mindedness. And I think of open-mindedness as really the doorway to really stepping into your third eye if you don't already use it. Now, there are some people that are, uh, frankly, uh, the third eye is really not nurtured in our society, but I do think some people are born with an innate tendency to have this um, intuition, intuitive gift. Um, however, if you don't have that intuitive gift, it's not a big deal because you really just you just have to learn how to use it. It's it's there. You just need to like learn that oh, there's a door right there. It's just invisible. You need to learn how to walk into it. And open mindedness is how you can do that because a lot of so. The first way to um, approach open mindedness is to look at the world and realize that nothing is really concrete, right? And so some people are going to innately like, yeah, you're right. Nothing. We don't know everything. But there are some people that are going to be like, seriously, really? No, there's facts that we know. We I mean, we hear this right now. This is going to be it's like slightly controversial, but this like idea of follow the science is the complete antithesis of third eye, what we're talking about. Today. Right. So there, the open mindedness can be both two things. One, it can be a sense of logical, um, a logical problem solving of contemplating things from different angles. And this can also have to do with our heart chakra in trying to understand other people's perspectives, because a lot of times, a lot of people do have logical perspectives. A lot of times people do not have logical perspectives, but it's trying to think about, okay, let's see if I can step into that shoe and look at this from a different angle, but can also, we can look at this from the fact that <laughs> I said, put this on my Instagram story recently that how do we know that everything we see in our reality is real? What if we were all just dreaming right now? And this could be really out there. That just that statement right there could seem really out there, but it's stepping to the fact that we don't really know. And maybe less out there is that all of us are seeing the world through our unique programming. All of us are born with this karmic soul, and we have these parents and peers in our town and the city we grew up in created this programming in which we and create our belief system for what we believe as true. And while most of us might all believe the, the sky is blue, some of us might see reality in a slightly different variation. And this creates different perspectives. And this also creates the fact that not all reality is created equal. All of us are seeing reality in a slightly different way. And it's worth it to step into a place of open mindedness and wisdom to realize that. Not everything is true and uh, and to contemplate other perspectives. Yeah. Beautifully said, Gabby. I was like, wow, how can I compete with that <laughs> sentence there? That was so wise. Such open third eye. On another note, I did not I not was not really having I didn't have an open third eye as a child. And this had to do slightly with personality. I'm a Myers Briggs SP type. I'm in the present and I'm prospecting. I cannot naturally be an NJ type who can see 30 years into the future of what's going to happen and exactly all the possibilities. I was just like I remember once we were on a road trip and Gabby asked me like, okay, well, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, how do you under do that? But so that's another side is that if you have an underactive third eye and I, it, the thing with third eye is that 
we can't really see the importance of it. We can say why intuition is important, having balance. We can see the logical reasoning of why it's important, but we don't see how it'll actually change our lives. And as someone who didn't have a very open third eye for a very long time and is still in the process of opening their third eye, the change is extreme. It takes your throat chakra and all those expressions. And then I realized it, make it, it made it so that I could, by seeing the future and trying to project of where I'm going to be and having a little bit of that plan laid out, it makes it so that I can speak my words better, speak with more wisdom, and so that, <clears throat> that I don't get too caught up in where I'm going to be right now. It makes it so that any worries are, that are minute, I realized that how much I was actually worrying about small things. And then in opening your third eye, reminds you like, hey, look at the world. Look what's happening around you. See the interconnectedness. Look at how small these little things are and really realize that what you're doing while important is also not that extreme. There's not so many things to it's worry about. a greater path for exactly. yourself. Exactly. So my, our tip for you today with third eye isn't necessarily to like how to develop your intuition. Uh, I hope we are going to encourage you to think about intuition that it exists or, or how it plays a role in your life. But I want you to look at intuition from a space of not knowing, of a space of, we use willingness consciousness a lot. Um, right now, I can tell you from all when we traveled, before 2020, we would fly, say, to Norway. And you go through Norway and you're like, oh, like ev almost every barn is red. They all have hay rolled in mozzarella cheese. There is a reality to the world that we did not know existed until we were there. So if we're from San Diego. San Diego, no seasons. Everything's the same. Rush hour traffic's normal. Then let's say we go to Bali and Bali, like you walk through your like tra fields of trash to get to the beach. Like, not that that's a bad thing, but I'm saying like, that's a reality. I would never experience like, well, we, not everybody in the world has trash service. What? What? Oh, it's like a little eye opening, dumb, dumb moment of enlightenment. Like, huh, I didn't think about that. Or Costa Rica where they're burning their trash. Whatever it is, it's like you don't realize that there's a different reality outside your own perception mm -hmm. and so the goal with today's third eye is to have this willingness to accept the fact that your reality may not be the reality it's your your perception is your reality but that it doesn't that doesn't mean it's reality and as soon as we accept that can you imagine if eight billion people in the world accepted the fact that like we don't know we really don't know we don't have like it's, there's not it one absolute anything. truth and then all of a sudden that willingness consciousness to interact with each other in a terms of like, hey, sh give me your ideas. What do you think? No attachment. That's what you think. That's what you see. Right now, we, you know, we don't go back to California hardly ever because when we're there, that reality is not the reality that we choose. We're our reality, like life is open. No one wears masks anywhere we go. Like things are just, it's a different reality. There's nothing wrong with our reality. There's nothing wrong with your reality. But the only thing wrong with intuition is when you choose that your reality is, is the, the right one. Right, yes, yes, reality. And so hopefully we are going to 10 times your intuition today by just inviting you, asking you, encouraging you to redefine reality or redefine what your attachment to reality is. Yeah, I mean, yes, that was great. And I feel like there's so many aspects of third eye. You can tell I'm like, I'm obsessed with third eye. So I'm like, there's so many things we have to cover still. We are already running out of time. But one thing I want to cover really important is that third eye allows us to detach from the menial life tasks that seem to be such a burden. It's looking, about, um, looking at the greater scheme of my life as a whole and saying like this little thing that I got upset about doesn't really matter. It allows you to embrace um, what um, we call equanimity, which is a, a Buddhist term for having not any, an extreme emotional reaction to things that happen in your life. Um, and then I was just reading, the, I'm reading the book, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior right now. And the character goes to have a picnic in the park and it starts raining on him and he has this emotional reaction. Oh, all of our food got ruined. That is the antithesis. And um, his mentor tells him, um, you are emotionally reactive to everything in your life and you will never be happy if you're like that. And so the third eye allows us to step back be like, okay, this is, is it really a big deal? No, probably not. It allows you to detach from things that stress you out. Yeah. And I think last thing is that when you open your third eye, it plays a huge role on your heart chakra, I believe, because 
it makes it so you can see things from other people's perspectives. And so it makes it so you can have better compassion because there's so many people who have open heart chakras. I'm like, oh, I just want to give to you. I understand. Here's sympathy. But they're not understanding or looking from their perspective what they're going through. So they can't really have a really good heart chakra with them. So when you open your third eye, your self-love for yourself and your love for other people, your relationships are going to be so much better. Yeah. Yes. All right, we will definitely be coming back to third eye in the future. But for today, I think we gave you <laughs> some uh, things to think about. And again, we go into deep uh, third eye training in our chakra healing course, Power, Passion, Productivity, which the link is below. Um, I think it can make huge gains in, in your overall happiness because when you can let go of this attachment to that your reality is the only reality, oh man, I, I, was, I was there. Like, I can share lots of stories another time, but as soon as I detach from that, man, life has been amazing. <laughs>